my mind is the story of the famous king Nana Kwamena Ansa. Mm -hmm. I will start by saying that for centuries we had been trading with foreigners like those from Carthage, Phoenicia, and literally Europeans. In fact, the Fantes called them Abrofo, Abrofo because the sea, you know, the beyond the area where the ice cannot reach is a barren nature, the Ebrochil. Mm. So those who come from Ebrochil are the Ebrofo, Abrofo. Mm. Mm. We have known them for long. But in 1471, the Portuguese actively started trading with the local people, especially the Fantes. And there is something worth learning here. Anytime they came with their ships, the local people made sure they would not land. And so the trade taking place was called the silent trade and restricted to the silent trade. And what is it for the young ones? The silent trade was a system whereby the European traders, notably the Portuguese, would arrive at the high seas, come with the canoes, and then place European goods at the shores, and then light fire to demonstrate to the Africans that they had come with goods and retreat. Our people would also place local goods uh, along each one, beside each one, and light fire to show that they should come and pick the local goods. If they come and your, they do not pick your goods, it showed that uh, it was too small, so come and add some. This was the trade taking place until 1482. Don Diogo de Azambuja came with more than 1,000 people, traders, soldiers, artisans, name them, from Portugal to meet the local chief of Edina, now Elmina, Nanako Amina, and Sa, for a place to build a permanent home for the Europeans to stay. Let me say that, and today let us learn something the Shama people did. The Shama people were those who first met Azambuja. He wanted to stop there and erect a house there. And the Shama people refused. And these were the reasons they gave, which I believe is worth learning. They said that the white people abroad were people who are smarter. They were smarter than us. And then they had technology. But they did not have, or putting it in the present language, they do not have land and they do not have natural resources. And forever and ever, because we have land and the natural resources that attract them, let us use this as our chip of the bargain so that that trade, the silent trade, will continue. The moment you allow them on your land, they will use their smartness and technology to take your land and your resources, and the end result will be to enslave you. We are praising the Shaman people today. This time. Now, they didn't receive them, they went to Elmina. And uh, Azambuja promised Kwame Nansa the protection of the king of Portugal. They desire to trade with them and they need to introduce a superior religion. Kwame Nansa, also very intelligent. And in fact, the history of uh, colonialism and slave trade commences with Nana Kwame Nansa answer everywhere in the world he very philosophically uh, replied that the relationship between your people and my people is just as the relationship between the sea and the land the sea comes blows the waves to the land and does not pretend that it will do better by staying here no it goes back and for as long as there is that intercourse between the sea and the land it becomes fine and there is harmony. And so let us continue to do what we are doing. The moment you come and build a house here, it will be like the sea overtaking the land. Mm -hmm. Then there will be no relationship. Mm -hmm. The people would not accept. And what happened ultimately 
was the construction of the first European edifice in the southern hemisphere of the globe, Elbina Castle, which was Fort St. George, the first ever castle of the Europeans built outside Europe was European, uh, 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 Elmina Castle in Ghana. Then, uh, Kwame Nansa also makes a great history by being the first African king to have offered his land to Europeans to settle on. Whether it is famous or infamous, it's up to us to judge. Then I would also say that as soon as they erected the castle, gold trade shot up and Elmina became the supplier of one-tenth of all gold supplies in the world. And that led other Europeans, the French, the Spanish, the, Port, uh, what do you call it, the Dutch, the English, and the Brandenburgers from Germany to follow up. And so today, Ghana has the largest concentration of European castles, forts and castles everywhere in the world, more than 30, and they are all world heritage sites protected by the United Nations. But as the Shama, Shama people predicted, and as it was emphasized by Nana Kwamina Ansa, by 1637, the Dutch had driven away the Portuguese and had increased the slave trade to the extent that the church, the chapel within the St. George Castle was converted into a courtyard where slaves were auctioned. That is the story. And don't forget, by 1884, Europeans would meet in Berlin to partition Africa among themselves. So from the silent trade to direct trade with us to slavery and then partition of Africa, that is colonialism, and we are still under the bondage of neocolonialism, all because the Shama people said that these people are smarter than us. And that is the reason why they have got houses that are mobile, the houses they have put on the sea because they don't have land. They are looking for a place to pick, fix their houses. And all that we have is our natural resources and then our land. The moment you accommodate these white people, they get your land, they get your natural resources, and using their technology and their smartness, they will enslave you. Good morning, Ghana. Good morning, sir. Mm. I think history may have.